Hey guys. Welcome to another tutorial. Today, I'm gonna show you a method which on my opinion, the fastest and best way to model anything in Blender, this approach, as opposed to a conventional 3D modeling method, provides a more detailed textures of the model by applying photos which already have all the details, speeding up your workflow into three folds. But this method works only if you're not that concerned about any close-up shots, because this will be obvious. So use this approach on a case-to-case -case basis. We're gonna start with this image of 7-Eleven, bring this to F-Spy, which is a free software that can help you create an exact camera setting, and line up X, Y and Z axes of an existing image to come up with correct camera focal length which makes modeling easier. This process is called camera matching, and this application will provide the settings which can then be transferred to any 3D application. Moreover, the FSPY website has a plugin that lets you import the camera settings data straight into Blender. So make sure to download that add-on, and install that to Blender. Now, let's open up FSPY and start to extract the camera setting on our image. I will not go into much details using this application right now, but you can comment down below if you want more detailed FSPY tutorial. As you can see in the vanishing point axis setting, the red line is the X axis, the left and right axis in Blender, the blue line is the Z axis, the upward and downward axis in Blender. The idea is to just simply line up those axes on the image. You can hit shift to zoom in. The best locations to choose are those points that are in various depths. And then we have this cursor which can be found on 3D guide settings. You can use this to check if the vanishing points of the project are lining up correctly. I'm gonna put the cursor here, this will be the origin point when we bring this to Blender. Just save the file and open up in Blender. Before we jump in, make sure you've already enabled the FSPY add-on, which you can download on FSPY website, and install it on Blender. Then you just go to File, Import, FSPY, then it will bring up the camera into the scene with the image as background. Now, we're gonna line up the X, Y and Z axis so we can easily model this image. I'm gonna open up a new window here on the right side, and I'm gonna use the left window as my reference. I'll enable the screencast key so that you can see what key I'm hitting on. We're gonna start with a plane mesh, rotate it by hitting R, X then 90 then hit enter. Now, let's start lining up the mesh into the image. You can do that by simply resizing the mesh, or in edit mode by selecting the edge and dragging it. Start from bigger and more obvious to smaller ones or more detailed part of the image. This process takes some time, after lining up the storefront, on edit mode, go to face select, then extrude the mesh backwards by pressing E on the keyboard. As you can see, we have already modeled the basic shape of the image. On edit mode, I'm gonna add a cube here for the store signage, line this up mesh on what's on the image. On edit mode, just simply extrude the faces until you get the size, position and shape of the store signage. Just move the mesh until it matches the size and position of the image. On edit mode, I'll add another cube for the tower signage on the right side. Simply line up the cube by changing the position and extruding the cube until it matches the shape of the tower. Now that we already have the basic structure of the mesh, let's give this a new material. Let's add an image texture, let's use our image. As you can see, the image is way off, to fix that, we're gonna add some modifiers. First, gonna add subdivision surface modifier, set it to simple. Then set the viewport and render into 5. Next, add UV project modifier set this to UV project. Then the object set it to F spy camera. Now, you can see that the photo is still off the mesh, to fix that, simply put this aspect ratio to the dimensions of the image itself. In here, we have 1200 by 800. Just gonna put it in here. As you can see, the image now lines up in the mesh pretty well. Let's drag this up to add some floor here. Now, on edit mode, add a cylinder, and line up these small poles in front.
duplicated to cover all the small poles. Now that we already have the basic structure of the mesh with textures on, we can now proceed with the smaller details of the image. But as you can see here, I can't add some loop cuts here, it's because this store signage and the ground interfere with the process. To fix that, I'll select the signage, separate it by selection, then hide it by pressing H on the keyboard, then also select the ground, separate it by selection, then hide it. Alright, we can now proceed with the smaller details of the image by pressing Ctrl R to add loop cuts and E to extrude and create 3D details to the points and lines on our image, like door frames, windows and edges. To do that, just press Ctrl R on the keyboard, double click then it will add that line on the image. You can slide the line by pressing G twice, so that the textures will not move while you add up some loop cuts. Don't worry if the edges are not perfectly aligned yet because we always have the option to adjust the individual points as we go along. Just continue adding loop cuts and repeat the process until all the edges are covered by edges and lines. You can also delete edges by selecting the edge on edge select mode, then press X on the keyboard then dissolve edges. You may refine aligning the loop cuts for as long as you want. The more time you spent, the better quality you will have. So now, once loop cuts are all in place, we can now add some glass materials on storefront. To do that, go to edit mode, select the face that you want to put a glass texture, go to material properties, click this plus icon, then add the same material, then hit this icon to create an independent copy of the same material. Rename this into glass, then assign it to the selected part of the mesh. Now, go to material preview, then let's create a glass texture by adding some material nodes. Let's add a glass BSDF and a transparent BSDF, then mix shader here. Connect this to BSDF to mix shader. Duplicate the mix shader by pressing Shift D. Connect the mix shader to surface of material output. Principled BSDF to mix shader, then connect mix shader to mix shader. Now, duplicate our image texture, color ramp, connect image texture to color ramp, then color ramp to roughness. This will control the roughness of our image texture. Next, connect the color ramp to glass BSDF roughness, which will control the roughness of the glass. Now, let's add a Musgrave texture, then bump node. Connect the Musgrave height to bump height, then normal to glass normal. This will create some irregularities on the glass texture. This color ramp here controls the distribution of roughness to the glass texture. You can control the transparency of the glass by playing with this mix shader value. Another thing that you can use when you want to add some irregular loop cuts is a knife tool. Now, I'm gonna use the knife tool to add some loop cuts here, next. On face select mode, I'm gonna select all the other parts which I want to put glass textures, then assign the glass texture. As you can see, the glass texture is now already applied to the storefront. Now, I'm gonna delete this part, we'll no longer need this. Press X and delete vertices. Now, let's fill this part, to do that, select all the edges here, then hit F on the keyboard. Now, let's start extruding the parts like this glass walls and other parts to create depth and 3D details. Create a container here, on edit mode, I'm gonna add a cube. Line it up on the image until it fits. Gonna add some loop cuts here, line it up on these areas. Select this face then extrude it in. Now, we already have some details here, in this part. Let's extrude it to create a frame. Extrude the other areas to further enhance the details. This control allows you to make the storefront texture either a glass texture or more like a color texture. On the bump node, you can control the surface texture of the glass. Now, let's fix the texture. On edit mode, face select, press U on the keyboard, then cube projection. This will project the texture according to the cube shape. But as you can see here, nothing happens. 
it's because our UV project modifier is still on, to fix that, we're just gonna select this and separate this mesh by selection. To do that, press P and separate by selection. This will create a separate mesh where we can remove the UV project modifier so we can manipulate the UV projection based on our likings. Now, on edit mode, with the separated mesh selected, go to UV, then cube projection. Next, go to UV editor window, then move these edges right here, line this up and place it to somewhere where you think it would look good. Alright, looking good. Next, I'll just repeat the process on the other parts which don't have the right textures. Aside from cube projection, you can also use project from view to reset the UV map texture. Now, we're gonna add some textures on the ground. To do that, select the ground, go to material property, create an independent copy of that material by clicking this icon, add color ramp here, using this node, you can change the color of the ground. Gonna remove this part, on edit mode, vertex select, select this part, press X, delete vertices. As you can see, we have an excess mesh left here, press X and delete that edges. Next. Let's apply the UV project modifier of this store signage. Now, let's fill this part, select all the edges here, then hit F on the keyboard. Let's extrude this a bit. Now, let's fix the textures of these meshes. On edit mode, with the mesh selected, press U, then project from view. Next, go to UV editor window. Then move these edges right here, line this up and place it to somewhere where you think it would look good. Next, I'll just repeat the process on the other parts which don't have the right textures. Aside from cube projection, you can also use project from view to reset the UV map texture. Add some loop cuts here, separate by selection, origin to geometry, then scale it up a bit. On edit mode, with the mesh selected, Press U, then project from view. Go to UV editor window, then move these edges right here, line this up and place it to somewhere where you think it would look good. I'll just repeat the process on the other parts which don't have the right textures. Next go to modifier tab, then add bevel modifier, place the bevel above the subsurf modifier, increase the value of amount and segments, 0.002, then 2 for the segments. I'll fix the textures again through projection mapping. Just keep doing this until you correct all the textures of the meshes. Next, we're gonna add some bump texture of the image. To do that, duplicate the image texture by pressing Shift D, add a color ramp, connect this duplicate image texture to color ramp then to roughness. Add a bump node, connect to height, then normal to normal. As you can see, the store model now has some bump created, but it's too heavy, let's try to reduce the bump strength, I'll fix the textures again through projection mapping, again, you can control the intensity of glass material and image texture by playing with the value of this mix shader node, control the smoothness of the glass by changing the value of bump node, playing with color ramp slider to modify the distribution of the roughness, for the ground, on edit mode, with the mesh selected, press U, then project from view. Go to UV editor window, then move these edges right here, line this up and place it into some grayish color to look like it's really an asphalt. Now, let's add some bump to the ground, put noise texture then add color ramp, connect this to bump node height. Then tone down the strength. Add noise texture and color ramp in between the image texture and principled BSDF. This is to add some noise and change the color of the ground. Now, let's fix the textures of these meshes. On edit mode, select the meshes with incorrect textures. Press U. Then project from view. Next, go to UV editor window. Then move these edges right here. Line this up and place it to somewhere where you think it would look good. 
Now change the HDRI into solid background black color. I'm using Easy HDRI add-on, it's a free and convenient add-on that you can also use to manipulate HDRI easily, I'll put the link in the description. Now, we're gonna remove these reflections of small poles on the glass, to do that, on edit mode select the glass, and use the knife tool to cut out the small poles, then go to UV, project from view. Go to UV editor window, then line this up and place it into some glass color texture to cover up the pole reflection. Now, you got the idea. Simply repeat the process on the other pole reflections. Now, go to this store tower, I'll fix the textures again through projection mapping. Just keep doing this until you correct all the textures of the meshes. Now, we're gonna make this glass window emit some lights to glow during darker store hours, but before that, let's group this nodes first to get the clear idea on purpose of each group. This group here on the top is what makes our glass texture. Let's duplicate this color ramp here, connect this image texture, first we're gonna add an emission color, let's add hue saturation node, then connect the image texture. Add a math node, then connect this color ramp here, connect the hue saturation node to emission color. This will control the color of our emission, then connect the math node to emission strength. This will control the intensity of the emission, change this to multiply. Now, let's turn the strength of the HDRI into the lowest level to make a night scene. As you can see, our store glass now glows and emits summer light. You can control the distribution of lights by playing with the slider of this color ramp, play with the value of this math node to control the strength of the lights. To change the color of lights, you can tweak the value of hue saturation node here, now, I'll put this into a frame and rename this as color texture, since this is the one that gives the main texture on the color input. Then this group here on the bottom. I'll name it as emission group, since this nodes here make our texture emit some lighting on our scene. Now, let's also add some lights on the store signage here, to do that, let's select our color texture and emission group, copy these nodes, then select the store signage object, on the material tab, add a material slot, click new, then paste the color and emission group nodes we have copied earlier. Next, connect the color texture group into the color input, hue saturation node to emission color, then the math node into emission strength. Now, go to edit mode then click assign. This will now apply the emission material into the store signage. Cool. Just play with the value of the math node for the emission strength. For the store tower. I'm gonna cut this out with the knife tool to isolate the store logo, copy the emission material from the store signage, then paste it here into the store logo in the tower, then assign the material. Now, you can see that we have some flickering noise in the store logo here, to fix that, just turn off our subsurf modifier here and you're good to go. We're gonna make some extrusion here a bit to make some depth, alright, perfect. Simply tweak the intensity of the emission according to your liking. Hope you guys learned something from this video. Thank you guys for watching, see you.